I bought this thing 100% by mistake, but I am so glad that I bought it. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. <laughs> I'm talking about my happy budget planner thing. Hey. hey guys, it's your girl Jackie coming at you with weekly videos on budgeting, debt, and investing. For today, we are talking about my review of the happy planner budgeting planner. Um, definitely, as mentioned in the beginning, this was actually an accidental purchase. I actually went on my social media and ha asked my friends, what is their preferred planner? And by planner, I was talking about, you know, oh, I have a dentist appointment on Tuesday, write it down. I have lunch with Barbara on Wednesday, write it down, like that type of a planner. Um, and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, everybody was like, you have to get the happy planner. So that's what I went ahead and did. I went on their website um, and I and I picked it up. This is not a sponsored video, by the way. But I went ahead and I picked this one up. And then when I got it in the mail, I found it to not actually be the type of planner that I actually needed. It was actually a budgeting planner. Now, here's the tea. Here's the gossip. Anybody who knows me or knows anything about me knows that I have been for as far back as I can remember starting at the beginning of my personal finance journey, I have been ride or die for spreadsheets. I'm a big spreadsheet budgeting individual for multiple reasons. A, I love it because you can access it from anywhere. By having it on my little Google Sheets, I can have it on my phone, I can access it on my laptop, on my, on my tablet, wherever it is that I am. Wherever I can access my budget if I just paid a bill or whatever. So I like that accessibility about it um, And also it's just very organized and Customizable and So so sexy. I just love a good spreadsheet. Um, so that has been my thing however after having purchased this accidentally I decided to give it a try and you know what guys I'm kind of glad that I did I have been using it I started this month which is January 2021 and I was like I'm gonna commit to doing it this way doing my full budget um, on paper using this particular budget planner just to see if I like it and I kind of like it I kind of like it um, so definitely we're gonna do a full review I'm gonna go through all of the pieces of the actual budget planner for you just so that you are aware of what's inside of it. Um, yeah, and so that's it. So let's run through it. Let's jump right in, oh yeah. So there are different ones available on the website I noticed, but the particular one that I ended up picking up was specifically the budgeting one. Um, and on the very cover it says, good things happen to those who budget, which I really liked. Um, as soon as you crack it open, it has kind of like an instructional pamphlet where it kind of goes over all of the things that are inside, which I thought was cool. Um, in general, the quality seemed really, really good. The paper is like super, super sturdy, very organized. They have like a little calendar um, for planning 2021 and also for even the following year 2022. So for all my fellow planners, uh, you can kind of jot down your financial goals in that section. Um, and then it has like the actual calendar feature, which is the only planner part to this entire book, unfortunately, it's just like this calendar. And they do have it along with tabs for every single month of the year for 2021, which is, you know, a pretty good way to stay organized. Um, so the actual budgeting feature for this particular um, budget planner is that it has a page for each month at the very top you would write your income um, and also like the totals for the expenses and then it has like actual lines for you to write the actual bills and the things that you're paying money toward. Um, you can put the category, the amount and the amount or the date that you paid it on. And then on the second page, they have like a savings tracker for you to put like your sinking funds and your different things that you're saving toward. Um, and also like, I guess if you're paying toward debt, you can also record that on, on that section as well. And then they have little challenges. Like this one is like a no spend challenge, which I thought was really cool. And then um, for each one of those, for every single month, they have four of the weekly 
um, expenses pages where you would write down like each week everything that you ended up spending money on. You would write the actual thing, the date that you spent it on, and how much it is that you spent. And they have four of those, I guess for, you know, because every single month has four weeks, obviously. So there's four for every single month. And then there's like a random like notes page where they just have space for you to, I guess, like jot down notes or your thoughts or anything that you want to jot down. And again, this, all of the things that we just mentioned, they have it for every single month of the year. And then at the very end, um, just a place for you to put down like next month's planning for the following month. So they have like financial goals, um, a section for you to write down stuff that you don't want to forget and any unexpected expenses, you can write those down as well. And then it just continues on with the following month. So as mentioned, I started using this in January, but today happens to be payday. So I figured you guys could sit with me for a little while as I fill in the bills portion um, for the month of February. Because for my paycheck that I'm receiving today, I'm going to be paying toward February's bills. So I kind of figure you guys could sit with me a little while, spend time with me um, as I fill that in. So I get paid bi-weekly, that's two times a month, and I know this is going to probably sound weird in comparison to how most people kind of pay their bills, um, but I've just been working really, really hard to cut down my expenses as much as possible, um, and I've been able to get it so that I only spend about 50% of my monthly income on bills. So all of my bills get paid um, when I get paid that first time in the month. Um, which tends to vary because it's like every two weeks but essentially what I'm doing is like one whole paycheck goes entirely toward my bills right now and then the other paycheck the entirety of the other paycheck I'm able to basically put toward savings um, so again I, I just did this by working really really hard um, to cut down my expenses and so that's how I've been doing it I just pay all of my bills um, at the very beginning of the month when I get paid and so that way I kind of don't have to worry about paying anything um, for the remainder of the month which I really kind of like it I don't know if it's gonna be like this forever because <laughs> um, as mentioned in a prior video I am getting married soon um, so definitely when we kind of combine incomes I'm sure it's gonna be a different system but for now this is how I've been doing it and I really like it um, definitely one of the most expensive categories unfortunately in my budget is student loans I'm sure anybody else who has student loans can feel my pain um, on average, I am spending about $400, $423 on student loans a month. Um, right now, obviously with like the CARES Act and everything that's going on, we have a little break specifically for the federal loans. I have two um, that are federal loans, the rest of them are private. So I'm still paying my private loans, um, but I'm like not currently paying on my federal loans. I have a little break and I get to kind of pocket that money and save that away. But yeah, whew. 400 bucks a month. What are you gonna do? The next category, um, when I'm kind of writing out all of the bills that I plan on paying, um, it's kind of like life in general, which includes like my cell phone bill, um, my rent, rental insurance, gas and electric, different things like that. And I have to say, like I have worked really, really hard um, to just cut these things down as far down as I possibly can. I live in northern New Jersey, which is a pretty pricey area. It's definitely not as bad as like Manhattan or like, you know, Los Angeles or whatever, but it's still pretty expensive. Um, and I was able to find a really affordable apartment um, in a relatively good area. So I was super, super lucky in that regard. And then on top of that, I also split 50-50 um, most of the bills, like the rent um, and the utilities and stuff like that with my fiance. So just through, just through like house hacking and doing things like that, it's really a good way to save in general for all of like those types of things, excluding food. I pay about $692, $692 a month. And that again includes like stuff like rent, 
my cell phone bill, rental insurance, um, the Wi-Fi, gas and electric. So it's pretty affordable if you can like split it with somebody else. I know that's kind of been like the millennial thing to do is to kind of house hack. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's so affordable when you do it that way for sure. Uh, next up is entertainment. <laughs> Obviously, I don't have to tell you in the current state of affairs, we're not really doing too much going out. There's not too much partying or traveling or clubbing. Not that I was a clubber before, but I'm just saying, like, you just there's just not much to be done. Um, so the majority of my entertainment budget currently has been subscriptions. You guys can see on here, Audible, Netflix, iTunes, which I love, Amazon TV, which is so good um that type of thing the total for this is 57 dollars a month and yeah this is pretty much the extent of my entertainment currently because yeah life friends life um so i have mentioned this uh particular category before in previous videos but and i know people do it in different ways um, but as an example, instead of having like a separate category for clothes and a separate category for shoes or whatever, I just have one allowance category. So I give myself an allowance about 200 bucks a month. Um, and basically I can do with that money, whatever it is that I want. To be honest with you, the majority of it, the one splurge guys, the one thing that I splurge on that I refuse to give up is that I get my hair done uh, twice a month. I go and I get a nice little silk wrap, a nice little blowout at the summer on and so usually that eats up the majority of my allowance but if I need to buy like clothes or shoes or something like that that's basically where it comes from and I find that doing it this way is really really helpful um, for me the next thing after that that I have is sinking funds um, I also mentioned this in a prior video um, I'm a believer in just like saving up for the things that you know you're gonna have to spend throughout the year so I put about a hundred bucks away a month towards like holidays that's like birthdays and Christmas for friends and family and stuff I am putting a little chunk of change away towards my like travel fund for when things actually open up and we are actually able to travel um, and then the rest as mentioned and I I'm not going to be able to pay this this paycheck but next paycheck um, I'm going to be putting away the majority the entirety of the paycheck towards my house uh, fund and so that's going on here in the sinking funds section as well and then the only thing that I actually I apologize I forgot to write it when I was like recording this um, was groceries and food and on average I probably spent about 400 a month in total on like grocery shopping and food um, and eating out and takeout and stuff like that but I forgot to write it my bad and guys that's pretty much it as mentioned um i started effective january 2021 i'm gonna use it for the full calendar year and just see how how i like it i don't know maybe maybe happy will convert me over from you know a spreadsheet girl into a, a paper budget girl we'll just have to wait and see but definitely i will keep you guys posted the whole entire way i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to give me a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you are not currently subscribed if you would like additional content and additional resources definitely be sure to check out my blog which is available at focusedfrugalfab.com and i will see you guys on the next one bye